First things first, I had to take off the ledger boards as today was all about finishing off the walls. Then a bit of caulk in the screw holes left behind. So there. And then you can mark here. You're gonna leave a, a, a 16th? Well, it depends on how you wanna mark and measure Uh, you cut it too much to the side here. Sorry. <laughs> so one side is good, the left is good, the right is not. It's too long. And see how small that is? Yes. You need to fix it. No. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Bad Santa? Oh, there's a movie I don't want to watch. You haven't seen that? No. Oh, you should. Really? Really. So there's a few ways you could go about that. You could try it with the saw. You could try it with the grinder. You could try to see how much you can get with this, though that could take a long time. And there is also, you could try it with this, but it'll kick up a ton of dust. So what I think probably happened was you were getting near the end and it, you let it curve a bit. Cause you can see it really is just from like here to here. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well that's easy. Another thing to consider is if it's a little bit too small, it potentially saves you a cut and we can pull it up flush to here and just have a tiny bit more of a grout line at the bottom. We can use red tape to pull this up tight here. Ideally, the edge of the pan would have been level, but we slant in quite a bit here. Yeah, okay. So the way I'm thinking to deal with that is to cut this off first, and then we have a smaller piece we can then try to flip around and yeah, get that's to the way I would go too. in there. Because I used thinset all the way down to the ledger, there were a few spots I had to clear out with the hand wasp to make room for leveling clips. There we go. Is this a left-handed whetstone? Here we have just a little bit of time-lapse montage to show that, yes, I did do more than just boss Santa around that day. Keep a 7 uh, and 13 16s on that. Remember, like, this one yeah, we cut so the... I'm, I'm cutting this one first. No, you're cutting this one first. <laughs> And in case anyone is wondering about my absolutely evil cackle there, Santa really enjoys literal word humor and he's often fairly careful about how he phrases things because of it. So catching him out on that one, well, a win is a win. This is all wrong. I don't know how I messed that one up, but I did. And if you're doing large format tile, especially with small grout lines, you're gonna mess up a bunch too. What I haven't figured out yet about this saw is why is there a handle here? Yeah, and then you got two hands working this because it's not square and stable. And then a third hand for this. So one of the things that I've done when I've had cuts that I need to get longer than that yeah. is I'll spin them around and say I don't want to come all the way to the end so like I'm notching this corner out. Yeah. I can start, get to about here, lift this up, Slide this in underneath oh, and I then see. run it backwards. Okay, makes sense. Speedy time lapse of me doing all parts of a notch cut cutting, grinding, and polishing. And then some even speedier, lapsier, tinier using the still camera. This is gonna be painful. It makes me wonder if I should try to pull that tile off so that I can work the differences out between the two because I don't, there's too much 
that has to go in that this can't huh well that's not great shouldn't have come off that easily I guess this would have been one of the last pieces that I did last night, so it hasn't had a full time frame to cure yet, but still. Keep that up there for now. Well, here we go. This one's for all the beans. That way I can spread the tension over two tiles instead of just one. And hopefully that will keep it from breaking. Nobody saw that. The last time I heard a sound like that, my tile had just broken. So I was pretty unimpressed with the suction cup making the same sound. So now I can tighten these two together and then I can twist all the way up here. What now? Random noises, like holy moly. And then that one was right when I was actually applying the pressure. Okay, now we're gonna pull this out. Try to squeeze that in a little bit. All right, so this is definitely gonna, oh, we're doing this over here then. Nope. Someone in Twitch chat said something about Santa should have stayed to help you with this problem. Wouldn't have mattered. He'd be standing around, not able to do much to help. Well, I appear to have built a very unflat wall. That is not terrible now. This is kind of terrible. This is super duper far out from the wall. And every time I try to push it in, I lose alignment. I don't know if that was drywall guys or if that was me or what. But we might just have to fill this up with um, drywall mud. Yeah, so we are coming out here quite a bit. So why do I use the red tape sometime? The red tape is for when I can't get a proper spacer in below a tile, like over there. Or when I need to pull a couple of things together that just don't really want to stay. So right now, I'm using it to try to position the trim at the supposed proper growth spacing. And because it's stretchy, it can apply continuous pressure. And when the glass guys come, I'm gonna have to be clear that, that they've gotta match this curve with, this, with their stuff.
I sure hope this one doesn't break. I don't like how big this space is. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. Please don't break. Please don't break, please don't break. Please don't break, please don't break. <sighs> oh, I hate this so much. It's like it shouldn't be shouldn't be protruding like that. There's nothing I can do. No one's gonna look at it. It'll be fine. I just hate it. <laughs>